Hi all, I have a very interesting game to show you from the TSAC Season 17 Premier Division. Stockfish 11 uh, has, it seems, a much more exciting game style than ever before. I've noticed that in my uh, use of Stockfish in analysis of games. Uh, it's really incredible that the Stockfish team has, has kept it evolving. Leela has clearly been very, very good uh, for Stockfish. The best thing to happen probably to Stockfish to help its evolution and to get even better. Uh, so we have this game Stockfish against Ethereal 12.01. Let's have a look. The first moves in the opening, we have uh, a Four Knights uh, Roy Lopez. It's not a very inspiring start to the game, you might think. Uh, there's only one imbalance now created at this point, because otherwise it's pretty symmetrical. <laughs> so Bishop takes c3, b takes. We have Bishop g4. So Stockfish here plays h3. Bishop drops back. a4. So that does give uh, the bishop a retreat back potentially to a2, and maybe a5 is is a concern. a6, bishop c4, h6, bishop drops back to h4, knight a5, the bishop drops back to a2. Now here, uh, bishop takes a4, I suspect bishop takes f7 is going to give white a reasonable game and damage black's king a little bit. Uh, just to put that on the board, bishop takes f7. And rook takes a4. It's possible there. There's queenside pressure here. I think white's uh, slightly better. So that pawn, uh, I don't think, can be taken. Queen e7, d4. We have bishop e6. Now bishop b3. So not minding undoubling the pawns if black wants to uh, play this. Rook a8, rook e1. Uh, so with rook a d8, any time d takes happens, it's a, an attack on the queen. Bear that in mind. King h8, knight d2. Now black here does decide to take that. C takes, rook g8. This is the start of a very aggressive plan from Ethereal. Uh, knight f1, g5. The problem with this is pawns don't generally go backwards. So unless Ethereal has seen quite a lot to justify this move, it's pretty committal. It does seem... I mean, it's a sort of move I definitely play with black here <laughs> to try and get attacking opportunities. Uh, and it carries on very aggressively now with h5. I guess if g4 here, white can seal the position with h4, and that's quite cozy. So h5 in a very aggressive tone. f3, making sure the bishop can at least go back to f2 as an option, as well as supporting e4. But actually, the bishop uh, drops back to h2, keeping an eye on e5 here. Uh, we have knight h5. Uh, so, yeah, by the way, any time, uh, you know, d takes happens, you might think, well, that pawn, the problem is, as mentioned, it hits the queen here. And this position is just very nice for black. Black can play uh, to use that c5 square, for example, like this, and it's uh, equal equality at the very least. So, okay, going back to the game, uh, the bishop tucks away, though, on h2, still eyeing e5. Knight h5. So while the queen is x-rayed by that rook, d takes is not very uh, useful here. a5, uh, just to see again in this particular configuration. So d takes, looking at the queen, f6 here. So it doesn't matter about the knight not using c5 here. This is quite nice as well for black. Black should be slightly better there. So um, a5, keeping that uh, central tension. c5, so black is trying to encourage perhaps d5 from white, knight e3 f6 so you can see uh, black is playing drafts here all these pawns on dark squares queen d2 rook b8 king h1 and now aggressive on the queen side as well b5 you've got to hand it to ethereal in this game uh, every single pawn now has been pushed push those pawns ethereal yes but <laughs> it's pretty committal stuff isn't it if black waits around though i i suspect b4 from white after d5 here b4 cracks open that c fold and white's use of the b6 square reminds me of some sort of sad king's indian defense uh possession you might have with the king's indian i think white's significantly better uh, at least the small edge there with that c file pressure and that nice knight on b6 so uh b5 uh and we have here uh, so this at least affords the possibility if um, b4, maybe c4, shutting down things uh, could be possible. So we have uh, a takes, rook takes. 
this is committal though. It's there's a target here. There's a clear target. This A file. What can white do with the A file? B3 is vulnerable at the moment, so that's closed off from attack diagonally. D5. Now Queen C2 protecting B3. And now this plan reminds me of game one of the 1992 Fischer Spassky match. If you remember that, we covered it on this channel. I'll give a link maybe in the description or in the comments, just remind me. White in that game played a spectacular Alakine's Gone battery on the A file. And in fact, the knight also had a role in attacking the pawn structure like this. And you'll see that game pattern, it seems, is recreated. Stockfish starts playing like Fisher in that game. Have a look at this. The rooks double. And this bishop drops back for a moment though there. N not minding knight g3 check. That's mostly harmless. So knight f4 was played anyway. Queen drops back here. The knight drops back there, avoiding doubled pawns. Uh, queen c7, and now eight, king h2. Bishop e3. Okay, some high-level shuffling. But now look at this. The start of an Alakine's gun construction. And this is what I mean about Stockfish 11. It seems to be playing quite creatively. <laughs> so c4, b4, queen f8, Alakine's gun. So this is where the queen is at the base of the two rooks. And now, to complete emulating Fisher, this knight b1 to a3 uh, is a sort of heads up for Fisher, I believe. And this is a heads up to a Karpovian uh, immortal as well against Unzika. So both Karpov and Fisher are being emulated here to some extent. We have rook a8, bishop f2, Karpov's immortal is also worth checking out. At the moment, that's just a nuisance move, but can it be useful later? Knight d3, bishop e3. So more high level shuffling. Knight b1, we see this Fisher maneuver. So going to this a3 square. And I thought I was shocked when I saw this game. I thought I must cover this game. There's a similarity. Uh, bishop d7. The knight drops back though. It seems was it more of a, a nuisance? Like the bishop a7, these moves. Knight c2, bishop b5, knight a3 again. Uh, and some more high level shuffling. Okay, and the beauty of this game, no YouTuber in their right mind will probably cover this because of all this high level shuffling, endless. But there is improvements being made in the position. The knight installing on f5 celebrates uh, those light square weaknesses that black has created earlier from the playing drafts, putting all the pawns on uh, dark squares, the adjacent light squares uh, are weaker. So that is a juicy, juicy knight there. You could argue, well, black's got a nice knight as well. Now we're back to the Alakine's gun potentially. Yes. And now the knight hops back. So it's like probing black. And now the knight goes into a3. We seem to be repeating things, but now it's all with a big difference after this move, queen f7. Uh, so the bishop can't really drop back here, it seems. You know, maybe knight takes c4 is on there. So we have queen f7, and now knight takes a. Knight takes b5, so this cracks open an a file infiltration. Is this enough to win this game? Uh, going through the queen side, well, b5 is on the fire. What white fundamentally wants is to sort of win this b5 pawn by playing bishop b6 at some point and taking. We're tactically safe to do so. Uh, here, queen a6, so bishop b6 not chosen there. And now we have this position where white doesn't mind the exchange of queens. And now we have more high level shuffling here. This sets a trap uh, which Stockfish, funny enough, doesn't fall into. Bishop g1 is played. If queen takes b5, then can you see what black does? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, knight c7 forks queen and rook and uses that pin. That would be a nasty thing to happen. Uh, it's not going to happen really to Stockfish generally, as Stockfish is one of the strongest. Uh, tactical monsters going. So queen, uh, so the bishop drops back, queen d7, rook a7, queen d8. So white is trying to arrange a b5 under attack. b5 under better circumstances here. b5 now is a real liability, exploitable, much more exploitable. Black lashes out here desperately with f5. This is the beginning of the end, I would say, this move. f5 at move 86. If king h6 instead, uh, rook e7, maybe just taking and then taking on b5 as an example, or rook b7, just immediately taking on b5, 
and this is strong for white, infiltrating to c6 as well. So uh, f5, desperate, e takes, queen takes, queen takes b5. So it is a self pin, you might think, well, that's inconvenient. Knight f6, queen c6, check. And then the queen gets on a dark square as if there's going to be a perpetual check. But the thing is, this bishop is always ready to retreat. We see this snapping off another pawn. Uh, queen g3, king h1. Now e4 from black. So not minding um, white taking off the queens. If queen e1 check has mentioned, the bishop could drop back. And e4, just take the knight's pin here. There's very little black is doing. In fact, taking a rook there, that's, that's the end of that. So... Uh, e4 here white took okay there's a kind of form pawn here there's a tempo gain there and this pawn looks dangerous but rook a6 threatens all sorts like bishop d4 rook e8 okay bishop d4 isn't used here because there's a dangerous pawn uh, to be pushed uh, if e3 had been played by the way immediately and just bishop takes e3 so rook a6 rook e8 Bishop c7. So yeah, Bishop d4 e3 looks as though uh, that's um, going to be trouble. Uh, maybe there's there's something going on here which actually favours black. It's difficult to get behind this pawn. For example, this would be a disaster where the bishop can't do anything about this pawn queening. So. Uh, so after rook e8, yeah, bishop c7 though, hitting that dangerous pawn. E takes, g takes, yes, it's it's more or less over in engine terms here. If rook e2, bishop d8, then this is just what is really winning the knight. Uh, so um, rook e1 check, king g2, king f5, bishop takes g3 here, check, bishop f2, Rook c2, d6, rook takes c3. So there's a pass pawn created here. White is two pawns up, check, and now bishop d4. And now uh, here, after knight d7, rook takes g5, three pawns up, two pawns up now. But white's got the passed h pawn now. Rook c1, h5, c3, bishop e3, rook, rook e1. King f2, rook h1. King g2, rook a1. h6, rook a8. b5. White's also got this path b pawn to push. Uh, rook e8, king f2, c2. Check. And now rook c6. So that b5 was useful to stop. Get behind that pawn. Tarash rule. Knight e5. Check. And the game ended here. It does seem entirely uh, hopeless. Uh, white can just take this pawn there's not much going on there so um yeah i thought this was fascinating because um stockfish seem to play like fisher against that structure and also a bit of karpov as a mix of karpov's immortal game against i believe on Zika, which was in the royal Lopez closed and also fisher's game in 1992 there's two parallels uh so i'll try and put those games in the description and in a, in a pinned comment for you to check out the game patterns so i think that's really really interesting stockfish does seem really really super creative nowadays and i hope to cover you know maybe some more of stockfish games i think it's uh it's great fun at the moment i have to say i hope you found it fun this game as well and quite creative it did make a creative impression on me. Okay, uh, if you want to check out Chess World and invite me for ga uh, a game, uh, just register via kingscrusher.tv. Uh, if you register with that, I'll invite you for a game after, or bit.ly slash chess world. Same thing. Uh, I have a Discord if you want to join the chat and then maybe suggest games for me to cover from TSEC. If you join my chat at kingscrusher.tv slash discord. And um, there's a couple of playlist examples there. There's also bit.ly slash stockfish as well to check out. Okay, thanks very much. Likes uh, appreciated on the video and shares and subscribes. Cheers then.